In meeting with community leaders, our Kapuna, for uh, the past couple of weeks and just trying to figure out what we could do. This is Oprah claiming to have met community leaders about donating $10 million to Maui. The community leaders, however, are saying something different. We need meetings in Lahaina. So many people, my employees, they're of Filipino and since, you know, they're Filipino. They don't know how to fill these papers out. We are only being told, stand in this line, sign here. What are we signing? Who is it benefiting, us or America? This really makes you wonder just what sort of relief is being provided to these people. Is Oprah being honest? I said I was going to figure out the infrastructure. We were working on the in infrastructure. I didn't figure it out. There's a whole team of us working on the infrastructure. And if she's not, what is she hiding from the public? Recent reports have raised questions about the nature of Oprah Winfrey's purported $10 million donation to support the victims of the Maui fires in Hawaii. As details continue to surface, a more intricate and potentially concerning picture emerges. Initially, Oprah and Dwayne The Rock Johnson announced that they had utilized $5 million to establish what they called the People's Fund of Maui. This move drew immediate attention because it seemed to contradict Oprah's earlier declaration of a $10 million donation for Maui's fire victims. Oprah attempted to clarify the situation by stating, the infrastructure is in place for your donations to help people be able to have their own money, have their own agency. However, her explanation left many puzzled as it appeared that only half of the promised $10 million was directly allocated to those in need. Subsequent developments have added to the confusion, with The Rock appealing for additional donations to assist the Maui fire victims. This revelation exposed that the initial $5 million was essentially earmarked as startup capital for their project. This prompts the question, why are taxpayers now being asked to contribute when it was initially presented as a substantial direct donation. We have created the People's Fund of Maui. That Why don't you just call up your good buddy Biden? He sent billions, hundreds of billions to Ukraine. In essence, it seems that Oprah and The Rock's $5 million was utilized to create a system to receive further donations, a process akin to launching a typical company. This raises doubts about whether the full $10 million was ever intended to provide immediate relief to the victims. Another concerning aspect is the revelation that the Maui Fund is owned and operated by the Entertainment Industry Foundation, EIF a non-profit organization. EIF executives receive substantial salaries with the president, CEO, and CFO earning significant annual sums. Additionally, 13 executives collectively earn $3.2 million each year, while lower-level workers earn an average of $64,527 annually. These revelations have led to growing speculation regarding Oprah and The Rock's true intentions. Some are beginning to question whether this might be more of a publicity stunt, particularly considering the fund managed by EIF has reportedly only provided $1,200 to individuals in need. Furthermore, the offer to have taxpayers donate monthly adds another layer of uncertainty, suggesting that the $10 million initially attributed to Oprah and The Rock may have primarily served as startup capital for the fund, rather than immediate aid for the victims. The deadly wildfires that swept through Maui in August, causing widespread devastation and taking the lives of 115 people, have sparked controversy surrounding the response of two billionaires, Oprah Winfrey and Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. As of September 3rd, the fire in Lahaina had been contained, with the fires in Alinda and Kula being 90% and 95% contained, respectively, according to the county of Maui. Many people on the internet express skepticism about wealthy celebrities appealing to regular working people for additional funds. Some questioned why Oprah and The Rock didn't simply donate the money themselves, given their substantial wealth. This person tweeted, Oprah is a billionaire hypocrite who could pay for the Maui damage herself. Instead, she's going after money from people who already have a tough time paying rent, mortgage, groceries, gas, kids' shoes, etc. Another person hinted at something more sinister going on behind the scenes saying, Yep, this Oprah Rock Fund is a tax shelter, money laundering grift, and an intended distraction from what's happened to the of Maui and community of families displaced. Wherever O goes, the 
children suffer. Similar criticism emerged on TikTok when the same video was shared on Oprah's and The Rock's accounts, and it included a donation button for viewers to make contributions. While Oprah's post received a significant number of views, likes were relatively low compared to the number of comments. Many expressed concerns about the financial struggles of everyday people and suggested that the celebrities should dig deeper into their own pockets or ask their fellow millionaire friends to pledge funds. Forbes reported Oprah's net worth at $2.5 billion, and Jeff Bezos, the world's richest person, was notably worth $270 billion at some point. On September 2nd, Oprah posted a follow-up video on Instagram, thanking those who had donated and stating that thousands of people affected by the wildfires had signed up for assistance. However, the controversy surrounding the donation remained unaddressed by both Oprah and The Rock. The criticism directed at Oprah and Jeff Bezos intensified when a video from a Maui County Council meeting went viral. A resident known as Auntie complained about the lack of urgency in responding to the fires, the failure of phone lines, and the absence of government warnings. She also questioned the destruction of the satellite city and took aim at both billionaires, accusing them of having ulterior motives. The woman's impassioned remarks shed light on the frustrations and challenges faced by Maui residents in the aftermath of the wildfires. Many are still unaccounted for, and thousands are seeking shelter in hotels. While Oprah may have gained followers on social media amid the controversy, two conspiracy theories have circulated online, suggesting that her assistance to locals was for publicity and that she brought a camera crew to a shelter in Maui, where they were asked to wait outside. Many have been pointing out Oprah's hypocrisy for a long time now, with this post from three years ago highlighting how her show was pure exploitation of people's problems and also gave a platform to the equally exploitative Dr. Oz, the king of fake science, and Dr. Phil, the king of fake psychology. It's a well-known fact that she's friends with Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein despite being a supporter of the Me Too movement. Not to mention, she gave a platform to the phony Michael Jackson accusers from leaving Neverland, do the research they're liars, while turning a blind eye to the actual of Hollywood. Like her style of journalism seems to favor the shock value of a breaking news scandal rather than actually seeking the truth. She gives firepower to Karens and other unsatisfied, wine-drinking housewives who have nothing better to do than believe everything she says on her show. In the wake of devastating wildfires that ravaged Maui, questions have arisen about the curious preservation of Oprah Winfrey's extensive ranch on the island. These inquiries have sparked a wave of speculation and conspiracy theories, particularly on platforms like TikTok. Some TikTokers have raised suspicions suggesting that billionaires like Oprah Winfrey could have played a role in the fires, potentially to acquire valuable land in Maui from indigenous populations. This conspiracy theory gains momentum from the fact that Oprah purchased 2,000 acres on the island in March 2023. Additionally, Olupalakwa Ranch sold two significant properties, one spanning around 520 acres and the other roughly 330 acres, to Winfrey's Los Angeles-based firm, Harpo Inc., on February 10th for substantial sums. These events fuel concerns about residents losing their homes and facing housing shortages. The most extreme version of this theory posits that the fires were deliberately set to force indigenous residents out of Maui, ultimately allowing the government to transform the area into an AI-driven smart city. This narrative is linked to discussions related to a science conference held in Maui in January, which touched lightly on the concept of smart cities or 15-minute cities, urban planning ideas aimed at providing residents with easy access to essential services within walking distance. It is also connected to an upcoming summit in Honolulu to discuss governance in the digital age. While there has been acknowledgement from government officials that climate change played a role in the fires, some theorists contend that the true agenda involves transforming Maui into an entirely smart island, marked by the adoption of electric, renewable, and solar energy, as well as the widespread use of electric vehicles in 15-minute smart cities. Social media has been awash with photos depicting what some claim to be space lasers causing destruction in the Hawaiian city. These images have garnered millions of views and further fueled conspiracy theories. Conversely, images showing trees still standing amidst the fire's aftermath have been cited as evidence that the fires were not of natural origin. Critics have pointed to these photos of space lasers, suggesting that they are proof of a direct energy weapon assault. One man on Instagram claimed that a friend in Hawaii captured a laser beam targeting the city from the sky. 
However, some skeptics argue that these laser-like phenomena may simply be lens flares or artifacts of the camera, visible in varying patterns in other shots submitted to local papers. Among the most striking images is one depicting a sharp beam of light descending from a clear blue sky, seemingly igniting an oceanfront countryside in a cloud of white smoke. While these visuals have captured the public's attention, the debate rages on as to whether they offer concrete evidence or are merely products of conjecture in the midst of a devastating natural disaster. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.